Hi, my name is Seth. I'm a first year apprentice in IBEW Local 14L. I'd like to talk about the scientific calculator bundled with our first semester's books. The Texas Instruments calculator we are required to purchase isn't optimized for electrical formulas. They must first be converted to a string the calculator can compute. Most of the mistakes I've witnessed in class have been due to input errors. I found a Casio made substitute that worked a lot better for me. I'd like to suggest it as a replacement for our current Texas Instruments calculator. In this presentation, I'd like to show you how these devices work side by side. This is the calculator provided with our first year's books. It can do any formula in our textbooks, but it has a few shortcomings. First, its display has only two lines of 10 digits for both input and output. Second, it doesn't handle multi-line formulas well. Third, it has quirky fractional formula limitations with radicane and trigonometric functions. Fourth, scientific notation, functions, and conversions take up a lot of screen space. This is my suggestion, the Casio FX300ES+. It's a scientific calculator like the Texas Instruments, but with significant advantages. First, it has a display 96 by 31 capable of displaying four lines of 16 characters. Second, there's a 10 to the X button located at the bottom of the calculator. Third, it handles fractional formulas with ease, resembling how they appear on paper. Fourth, it can convert numbers into engineering notation using the ENG button. Fifth, memory functions are more accessible. And finally, it can handle formulas too complicated for the Texas Instruments calculator in a single calculation. Next, I'll demonstrate what these calculators are like to use by inputting identical formulas. Here's how it's arranged. At the top left, you'll see the goal of the calculation. Below that, you will see exactly how it's entered into the Texas Instruments calculator. Below that, you'll see how it's entered into the Casio calculator. This formula is used to calculate a rolling offset when bending conduit. The result is the number of inches apart that the pipe must be marked in order to bend it correctly. On the Texas Instruments calculator, you will note that the entire formula does not fit within the parameters of the display. Additionally, notice how it handles fractions. 3, 3, and 8 are separated by a special symbol used to denote fraction. On the Casio, it appears as it does in the original formula. This formula is used to deduce the resistance of a length of wire. Notice how parentheses must be used on the Casio calculator in order to get the correct output. This formula is used to deduce the equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit with multiple resistors on each branch. On the Texas Instruments calculator, it is significantly easier to use to the negative one exponent, as you see in the formula, as opposed to using the one over the value of the resistor form that you see on the Casio calculator. The Casio can do this as well, comma, however it's easier to check your formula against the reference material if it looks the same. The result was given in a fraction. To convert it, both calculators have an S to D conversion key. I'm pointing at them in this photo. Oh yeah! That's better. Notice how on the Casio calculator the formula has been kept on screen, while the Texas Instruments calculator had to start a new line in order to do the conversion. Here's where things get complicated. Here's an example of a formula used to calculate the equivalent impedance of a resistive capacitive inductive circuit. At this point, the Texas Instruments calculator is only displaying about one third of the formula entered into the calculator. It took me several attempts to get the Texas Instruments to display the same result that the Casio gave the first time. If I were taking a test with the Texas Instruments calculator, I would have gotten this question wrong, because I would have no way to check my answer to make sure it was correct. For more simple formulas, the Texas Instruments calculator does just fine, like this power factor calculation, for example. In this example, you can see that both calculators can handle trigonometric functions. Both calculators also are capable of handling scientific notation. In this formula, we are trying to figure out how many watts are consumed by each individual component in a parallel circuit. 
The ENG button on the Casio calculator converts the results to the best resolution engineering notation. So 6.25 times 10 to the negative 7 watts is converted to 625 nanowatts. This is especially handy because our electrical multimeters also take readings in engineering notation, such as megawatts, kilowatts, milliwatts, microwatts, and nanowatts. Subsequent presses of the ENG button will increase the resolution, thus sliding the scale from milli to micro to nanowatts. Pressing shift followed by the ENG key will decrease the resolution, causing it to go from nanowatts to microwatts to milliwatts. The Texas Instruments can only convert to scientific notation. Conversion to engineering notation must be done manually. So, 6.25 times 10 to the negative seventh is its best answer. This engineering notation functionality is especially handy towards the end of AC theory, wherein we start working with very small values in capacitors and inductors. In this formula, we are trying to deduce the value of a capacitor in farads based on its capacitive reactance. Once again, by pressing the ENG button, the result of the equation is given in engineering notation. This is likely the way that a quiz or test would desire the answer. Now let's talk about the cost. The TI-30XIIS costs $12.97, indicated by the blue arrow. The Casio FX300ES Plus costs $12.62. That's 35 cents less for a better calculator. Neither of these devices were on sale. This is the full price I'd expect to pay for both from a supplier. Both calculators are usable in state exams. The DSPS.gov website defines their calculator requirements as calculator. No programmable calculators or cell phone calculators allowed. All calculators shown in this presentation aren't programmable, though they do have memory functions. If the JATC cannot get Casio calculators or has an exclusive deal with Texas Instruments, there is a Texas Instruments substitute. Though it doesn't have the handy ENG button, it's the official GED calculator. It'll do everything that a Casio calculator does, but for more money. This is the Texas Instruments equivalent of the Casio FX300ES Plus. I highlighted the normal price, $20, $7.33 more than the Casio. Still worth the price to me. I'd pay 7 bucks for a better GPA. In conclusion, of everything apprentices buy, calculators are used the second most, after the NEC codebook, of course. I know the new apprentices will learn and understand electrical theory better when the formulas in their calculators match what's in the textbook. I'm not bought and paid for by Casio. I'm just really passionate about the IBEW and calculators. I appreciate your consideration and hope my suggestion is received well. Thank you.